Hello, I'm Bud SD, and welcome to episode 13 of Bud's Beer Blurb, the podcast. This is a very special episode because, well, Thanksgiving's just a couple days away, and we have a little holiday skip for you. <laughs> Plus, we have Mr. John Prout on the show today, and he's an amazing fellow. He's an accomplished musician, and he goes to a brewery to lead their open mic night. We also have another edition of Hops 101. This is a very special hop called Peacherine. And that's all coming up right after this. Well, it's Thanksgiving time, so we thought we'd give you a little educational segment about pairing beers with your Thanksgiving dinner. We have a special guest to explain these pairings, and his name is Charles Winkleweather. <laughs> Take it away, Charles! Thank you, bud. On this most festive day of gluttony, we want to make sure that we are well prepared to serve the correct beers with our Thanksgiving meal. We wouldn't want to be embarrassed now, would we? <laughs> no. Some of the beers that pair well with Thanksgiving foods include Amber Ales. They pair well with grilled or roasted meats because of their toasty toffee flavor. Porters pair well with desserts because of their cocoa sweetness. Belgian style ales pair well with salad because of their bubbly, sweet, and subtle fruity flavors. Fest beers pair well with pre-dinner treats like salty nuts <laughs> and mild cheeses because of their earthy, fall-like flavors. IPAs pair well with, well, turkey. <laughs> there you have it. Back to you, bud. Okay. Well, I hope this has been as informative as it has been, well, just downright weird. Okay, so Nick and I are in the studios today, and with us we have Mr. John Prout, who is in charge of running open mic nights at a brewery. And I think we met at Labyrinth Brewing, and I'm sure he has a story about that. So, John, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me, bud. And Nick? Hello again. There you go. <laughs> John, obviously if you're, you're running an open mic, you're playing yourself, so you must be an accomplished guitarist. Uh Deep breath on that. Yeah, I would say <laughs> accomplished guitarist is a stretch, but um, I, I I can perform by myself. I'll okay. put it that way. <laughs> How long have you been playing, John? Um, I've been playing since I was around 15 years old. Wow. Um, my dad gave me a crappy guitar, and he didn't give me any lessons on it or anything like that. And I was just listening to Weezer and Green Day and yeah, just the stuff that made it easy to pick up the you know the rhythm of playing right. guitar. Right. Cool. Well, that's. That's a good way to start, though. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of how I started. I was about 13 or 14 when I got my first guitar put in my hands and just kind of self-taught. Uh, Nick is also a guitarist. He's a pretty uh, accomplished musician. How long have you been playing, Nick? Uh, holy shit. Uh, 16 years now, wow. I think, because I was about 15 when I started as well. Had a nice little you know, Strat that everyone had. I think Candy Apple Red. Really I was going to say guitar. red. I was going to Always. If yeah. it wasn't red, it was going to be blue. Right. The funny um, thing is, is the, that first guitar I mentioned, it's right there. I know it's all like you can't buy it, behind it's stuff. It's black, yeah. But I yeah, see. it's uh, the Strat knockoff. It's like a Squire. Yeah, as I'll say, yeah. it's, it's, it's always a Squire. <laughs> yep. Well, let's see. Uh, so you, you self-taught. You haven't done anything at all to like learn new things? I mean, it's just all just picking it out. Did you learn to read music or anything like that? wasn't really able to read music it wasn't like Either. my thing aside from vocals so one, okay. note, one note at a time is great for me mm -hmm. um i was i was a, a bass in a magical choir so you kind of had to learn mm -hmm. where it was but i was much better mimicking if i heard it i could do it mm -hmm. um and then i could use that to follow along with the music um so i was faking it through, <laughs> through reading music once i started playing out by myself there were things that i wanted to do as far as like making just me and just a guitar more interesting. So I went and uh, got some lessons from uh, this really great musician, Bob Pori, who's in Windsor. And he is just, he's fantastic. He's helped a couple of my friends, but mm -hmm. he's just kind of makes it, throws like a riff here and there. Mm -hmm. Like if you give him a list of songs, he'll be like, you do this song and this song, do this and this song, just go back and forth. And it was helpful. 
Okay. And yeah. then I had my son. And then I couldn't go to those lessons anymore. <laughs> did, uh, did he ever teach you any, like, theory of music or anything? Did you ever... Uh, no, I told, him, I told him I wasn't interested. In that. <laughs> I, I said that for the longest time. I finally took it in in high school, and I was like, oh, "This yeah. is pretty interesting." And you know, forgot most of it in about thirteen minutes. What I got <laughs> out of him was a uh, little minor pentatonic scales. Oh, that's yeah, that's yeah. pretty much <laughs> pretty much what I did. <laughs> it, and those scales are very important, aren't they? Have you ever been in a band? Um, yeah, I was in a couple bands when I was younger. When I was nineteen, I was in a new wave punk band i want to for the listening audience i am using air quotes <laughs> <laughs> so it was basically whatever the the singer wanted to do mm -hmm. which was he wanted a, a punk sound he's very emo fun fact he was the son of an engineer on the song celebration okay yeah <laughs> cool was that cool in the gang yeah so i remember going to his house and he had the gold record on the staircase wow and it was crazy and his dad Stephen galfis is his name he was a producer for a Grammy-winning uh, Native American artist. So, yeah, Mike was the singer, and we, we followed his whims. <laughs> his whims. And did you guys end up playing out or anything? Um, we played in the uh, New Haven area. It was based out of Guilford, mm -hmm. Connecticut. Played about a few shows over the summer when we were maybe practicing for six months. And then, you know, at that age, everything kind yeah. of fizzles out. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, we... We did what I could, but I did lead guitar on that, and I faked it very well. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, you know, I thought it sounds just like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I pressed the whole, did you ever get lessons? Because I've heard you play, and yeah. you're, you're really good. So Thank you. I figured you had to do some sort of study. I know Nick has studied music theory and things like that, but I think you did that on your own, didn't you? Yeah, I taught self-taught and everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I took the theory in school, didn't pay attention, <laughs> but then once I graduated is when I actually paid attention to all that stuff. Yeah, it kind of came back at you, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I just got bored and was like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, you brought us a beer. I sure did. What'd you bring us? I brought us a Back East Brewery Ice Cream Man. I brought this specifically because this is my wife's favorite beer. Oh, so this is a little tribute to her. That's right. All right. Hey, Kate, why don't we uh, open these up? Nice. <laughs> this is like a, this is like my gateway beer. It was for my wife, too. I'm going to let the drinks. I'm going to let the head settle for a moment while I uh, go on to. Have you ever written any originals, John? Uh, like, yeah. Um, so I. I had a friend who was big into poetry when I was in high school and college. Mm -hmm. We went to the same high school and college. So there was a bit of time where he was writing words and I was writing music. Mm -hmm. And I would be the one to play it all. Shout out to Chris yeah. Mashad. He was a, a huge part of what got me into playing. Mm -hmm. So once I started you know, being an adult after college... <laughs> I'm going to do as that someday. Does, as, yeah, one does, there. <laughs> as one does. As one does. I started writing, and those were mainly fantastical experiences. Like, I'm watching an episode of Gilmore Girls, and I'm imagining that I'm on a date with Rory Gilmore. Oh, boy. So <laughs> that was that was his kind of writing style. Okay. And so and so when we, we teamed up for that stuff, it was like, well, let me get your reference point. And then that's how I got in Gilmore Girls. But that's a separate story whatsoever. <laughs> um, so uh, we haven't talked in years. So... I ended up starting to write my own stuff mm -hmm. about uh, two, two to three years ago. Without the Gilmore Girls? <laughs> Without the Gilmore More personal stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I, I still do play that song. It's, uh, <laughs> it's called Rory, <laughs> as one is. Yeah, I started writing more, more personal stuff, more things that you know I've gone through in the past three years. But yeah, it's, it's starting to pile up, the stuff I've Nice. Written. Yeah. And that's not easy to do. You know, writing music is... I, I mean, I've written a few tunes over my years, and... You know, sometimes when you're looking for that one line, that one line can mess you up completely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, why it likes me. I can only write one line. <laughs> there you go. And that was the line I needed. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> now, you're doing the open mics. How'd you get started in that? Well, my, my experience playing in front of people started with open mics. Okay. Um, I started at the Pine Loft in Berlin. I think that's where it is. It's on the Berlin Turnpike. But okay. There was a Thursday open mic that I would go to with my friends, We'd get pizza, and, you know, I would play whatever obnoxious cover I was thinking about. It was usually like a December song or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, something that nobody would get. So as far as running the open mics, I started, I started going back to them. Once the pandemic was over, I started to prioritize music again. And I was just kind of floating for a while. I wasn't really thinking about playing out anywhere. And then as soon as places started opening up, I was like, all right, let me, uh, let me go in here and start seeing if people want, you know, music for three hours on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. 
at Labyrinth, it was one of those places that I frequented all the time when I was mm-hmm. in Manchester. So now that I was in East Long Meadow at that point, I started going to the open mic at Labyrinth just to hang out with friends that I was okay. used to. So somebody else was doing it? Yeah. Uh, Brett Jiglio was doing it. Okay. Yeah. So he was doing it for a couple of years. I don't know if that time served with the pandemic, but <laughs> um, there, there came a Wednesday where I was there where he said that he was going to take a residency at one of the restaurants in, in Glastonbury on Wednesdays. Oh, so, so he's a chef. I, I, no, 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 no. He was going to play oh. there every, every Wednesday night from eight to 11, okay. which would take him away from the open mic at Labyrinth. Okay. I was literally sitting right next to him mm-hmm. when he told uh, Amanda Wilkie, the, I don't know if we want to name drop on yeah, this. That's okay. Amanda, <laughs> Amanda's been Amanda. across these mics before. Yeah. Yeah. No. So Amanda's great, mm-hmm. but she was, she was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then my wife, three months pregnant. I'm like, I can do it. <laughs> I got a PA, I got mics, I got the whole setup. I was like, I can do it. And then she went and talked to Sean and Adam and they were like, go ahead. No kidding. And so uh, what happens with the first place you did this. That's right. Okay. Now it must've been very tragic to you to hear that they were closing. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I mean, it was for all of us. Who was it tragic for everyone? <laughs> yeah, it was, but you had something else that came up. It's going to be hard to replicate what we had there. Mm -hmm. And it was two and a half years. It was like, they gave me the space to grow. Yeah. And they gave me the the confidence to say no to people. (laughs) To like, to like kind of curate who's going to be there. Like the first week there was a terrible stand-up comedian and we were just like, nope. At the operant? This At is the operant. Operant. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, sorry, I'm sticking there. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. No worries. And, and Adam and Sean taught you these things, how to kind of propagate your business, if you will. Yeah, they just, they, 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 they gave me the confidence to kind of be like, if you're going to say no to this person, they're going to go to them. They're going to complain to them mm-hmm. and they're going to say, well, you know, we gave full discretion to John. Oh, so they backed you up. Yep. Nice. Yeah. And, and that was Wilkie, that was Gianna, that was everybody that was there. Yeah, those guys are stand-up guys, though. Yep. They really are. When they ended up closing, I reached out to a couple places Mm -hmm. in the same neighborhood because I was like, I'm getting 16 people playing every single week. And it was over four hours by the end of the labyrinth. So I was like, I want to find a place that's going to at least start me at three hours. And then if I still bring that crowd, the opportunity to expand the hour instead of going until nine o'clock and having people only play two songs, Mm -hmm. make sure that everybody gets their own amount of time. Mm -hmm. And so we went to four hours and basically the, most similar situation I could have had was with Urban Lodge. And they're growing too. They're doing really well. And they make really good beer. So, uh, yes. <laughs> now, it, so you just approached the owners? Um, yeah. So I actually reached out to a couple bars on Main Street and then I reached out to Urban Lodge. I emailed them. Um, I didn't have a contact there, which is totally different than what I had at Labyrinth. Okay. Like I knew the owners from the beginning of, right. of them opening. Right. So it was kind of like going in cold and being like, hey, this is what I can bring you. Mm-hmm. And so when I met with them, they actually told me that they were looking to host an open mic. Wednesday cool. was the only day that they were going to be able to do it. Okay. They didn't want to start it because of what Labyrinth was doing. And I was like, funny you should say that. I'm <laughs> the guy who was doing it at Labyrinth. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's con- <laughs> that made it convenient for them, right? <laughs> So with them closing, I was like, hey, I have an opportunity to bring, you know, this group of people who are coming from around central Connecticut. Yeah. They want a place to play yeah. on Wednesday nights. You know that they're going to be in this neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Why would I bring this to, you know, Western Mass where I am? Right. Why, yeah, your why following's not, there. Yeah. Why not keep it there? Right. So if everybody's comfortable with me hosting the setup I have, it seemed like a no-brainer and people have responded it's still busy it was three weeks we were there for three hours and then you know i got a text saying hey we're gonna be open till 10 now so okay stay till 10 and, and working <laughs> right, cool. with working with the owner brian he's uh ryan's cool um him. i actually haven't met brian um ryan, I've been, ryan. Oh, ryan sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay cut, yeah obviously cut, you haven't met him <laughs> um <laughs> he's a good guy he's a really good guy yeah I, i've heard but i've been working with kayla in the tap room no dealings with max either the, the brewer because oh. probably like when you show up they're gone Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. How how did you get people to do this with you? I mean, how did you find those sixteen people that were you know continuously showing it's up? Persistence Which through, sure. through myself and through the business. Okay. So like, if if Labyrinth is willing to stick with me through a, a spell of you know, there's five people that are willing to play, yep. and they just keep at it, mm-hmm. and they keep at it, and then you know. Aside from that, promoting through Facebook, mm-hmm. going through open mic groups on Facebook okay. um, in New England and Connecticut. Mm-hmm. It's just 
it's word of mouth because the, the, the people that would randomly show up would, you know, they have friends that play, yep. or they're going to other open mics. Yep. They, hey, there's a, there's a Wednesday spot over here. Mm-hmm. It's in the middle of the state. Why don't you go there? But really, I can't thank anything other than the belief that that Labyrinth was able to just let me keep doing it yeah. no matter what. Yeah. And then, you know, two years in, it got to the point where they moved it to four hours. And that was like the ultimate sign <laughs> that it was like, <laughs> you're affecting our business so much that we need you to be here till 10. Wow. That's great, though. Which, again, the surprise of them closing, you would not be able to tell that on Wednesday. Right. Like that, that was so, yeah, that was crushing. Um, I remember seeing pictures of what was going on there before they closed. Like, holy crap. Yeah. Just yeah. Packed. You know, it. on one hand, it's like, great. On the other hand, it's like, where were you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, and, you know, you've had some pretty good musicians showing up, too. Um, uh, Brian Titus used to show up every now and then. Yep. And Brian does a lot of, uh, he, he tours a lot of breweries out in this way. He, he's a local and he's, uh, he's very good. Yeah, he's a good friend. I met him because he randomly showed up to an open mic. Okay. And he was like, I really dig it here. Mm. Uh, I'm going to come back and play next week. Nice. And so he came back. And like every three months he comes by. It's always nice to check in with him because he's like, he is so talented. He's one of those guys that kind of inspired me to like kind of find my own voice as far as writing goes. Cool. It sounds so easy for him. Right. But it also sounds so honest. Right. And yeah, I agree. It's, it's very clean. Exactly yeah. what he wants to sound like. Yeah. So him and then somebody like Lee Totten, those are the, mm. the two people that I'm I'm so happy to like know. I hear that. So, you know, you've been doing this for a while and, you know, we're in a brewery and the brewery's not like known for being like a, a biker bar and they're not usually rowdy, but have you ever run across like a bad situation of any sort? <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So there were... I'll, the worst one. I'll give you that one. There you go. Perfect. All right. So <laughs> I believe this was about seven months into me doing the open mic at Labyrinth. Mm-hmm. There was a gentleman who was on leave from the military and he was there with his girlfriend and it became clear to me that this was just a person that he met. <laughs> he was he was drinking all night and he was asking every single person that went up to the microphone to sing Britney Spears for his girlfriend. Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, so the, the first time I was like, do you understand that this is an open mic? The people that are going to perform are going to do their own thing. Right. And like, well, can you do it? I said, no, it's busy. It's the night before Christmas Eve. We're going mm. to be packed the whole night. We're only here until nine. That's just, it's it. Right. If, if you have a request, you know, you can play it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to hear Hit Me Baby one more time. Oh my God. That's been playing in my head since he mentioned Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> so he kept going. Mm. And then... We were on the last person. The last person did not agree to talk to him okay. about his request. <laughs> and then he came over to me and said, I've been training with rifles. And I was like, what are you talking about, dude? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you've escalated this beyond. From Britney Spears to rifles. That's Britney Spears one. to rifles. Well, yeah. that is a good idea. That's, that's a good band yeah. name. You know, thankfully, I was able to, uh, you know, I went to Alicia, who was behind the bar, and I went to one of the owners. I was like, this guy needs to get out of here. And yeah. he was, like, toddler kicking and screaming, being taken out of there. Really? Yep. Perfect. By his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she had to police him. <laughs> she did. Yeah, Alicia went over to him and said, like, you know, it's, it's time for you to go. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was really unfortunate. I was like, I hope this doesn't get back to anybody you report to. I love Alicia, but she's, she's a great girl. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean... Let's, let's flip the coin now. Best experience you've had doing this. So I feel like that constantly happens. It's just in my nature to think that every Wednesday, if I don't hear from anybody, mm-hmm. nobody's going to show up. But I, I'm constantly surprised by the amount of people that come to the open mic. I'm mm-hmm. constantly surprised the amount of people who stick around the open mic mm-hmm. the entire time. Mm-hmm. That's overall probably the best thing I can think of. Okay. What I am happiest about is when I see those people who come in, they bring a binder full of music. Yeah. They play four songs mm-hmm. and their covers and they come by and they just play it. And then seeing them week to week, get more confident, more confident, more confident, because I know for a fact that I was there. Right. I was there. So like when I see somebody like, I'll give her a shout out, Elena Foster. She's like, she's one of my favorites. She is such a good songwriter. She's so honest and melodic. And she's so like in the moment about what she's doing. Mm hmm that she plays to whatever volume the crowd is. She's not just out there blaring whatever she wants to. Mm-hmm. She's doing exactly what she needs to do. Seeing somebody that confident go from, you know, binders of music to all of a sudden, oh, I don't need a music stand. Nice. And then it's like, 
it's that little moment where you're like, oh my God, they, they got it. They <laughs> dialed it. They in. got it. And it's <laughs> like, at a certain point when I was in college, I reached that point where I was like, I went over that hump a little bit where mm -hmm. I was like, I don't need notes. That's nice. You can finally play some Brady Spears. Right, exactly. And then I thir and then I turned 35, and then I needed those notes again. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, it is weird. <laughs> yeah, I understand what you're saying. I really do. <laughs> so I'm happy for mm -hmm. like these people, but it doesn't last. <laughs> yeah. When I, when I was in my 20s and 40s, I didn't need my, you know, I'd learn it, and then boom, I was good. I started just playing and started mm -hmm. singing them. Then I hit my 40s, and I was like, I can't play without a... Yeah, light, you know, all the computer. lyrics are gone. All the lyrics yeah. are gone. It's, you hit that first <laughs> note, and you're like, what happened? Where, where, where is it all? I don't, I'm lost. <laughs> so you just have the one brewery you're playing? you just at Urban Lodge? Yeah, so uh, just at Urban Lodge. I've been hoping to do some other... I Honest to God, I would, I would probably do less gigs by myself mm -hmm. if I had a second open mic, because they are by far my favorite thing to do. I love seeing the people come by and, you know, hey, um, is Dustin playing tonight? Is this person playing tonight? Cool. It's just like when the bartenders are checking in with you to make sure that somebody's playing, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, there's a connection here. This is good. Yeah. Yep. So you play out besides the, the open night? Yeah. So I'll usually do weekend gigs whenever, not whenever I'm allowed, but whenever. <laughs> <laughs> Time helps yeah, you. Yeah. 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 I, I have to pick and choose my spots and that's, that's totally cool. Well, you're a family man. Exactly. Yeah, and you have how, how many kids? Just one. Just the one. Well, that's yep. the, yeah. You're a parent, that's for sure. So you have time constraints and things like that. But how many gigs a week do you do? It's usually one or two. Okay. Aside from the open mic. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. No, it's it's a great time. Like I'll go down to twelve percent. Mm -hmm. They're one of the best places to play at. It's a huge responsive audience. Really? Yeah, and wouldn't really think that with like a it's like a big tent that they have. It's, yeah. You know, it's a collective tap room with mm -hmm. a whole bunch of breweries. So it's. <laughs> You know, you got a lot of people, so... It's a great spot. I yeah. love the spot. Yeah. yeah. And I know exactly what you're talking about with that tent. Oh, the dogs. The dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs are great there. But yeah, I'll, I'll play up in Westfield, Mass. Okay. Great Awakening. Um, oh, yeah. Two weeks notice. Mm -hmm. But you're but, playing out of breweries. Exactly. Okay. Uh, any any future plans to expand yourself in the, the open mic or... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've I've talked to other people about doing open mics. They you know, took my advice and mm -hmm. hired somebody else. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it, it's something I've I've looked to. I, I've wanted to do, like, if there are any breweries that were open seven days, I would obviously, like, you know, Mondays and Tuesdays are the worst for breweries. Yeah. So to be able to do something on a Tuesday would be really impactful. But well, well, for both you and the brewery, though. Exactly. <laughs> because of my time constraints. Right. My, my kid. <laughs> <laughs> Teach your kid how to play drums. He has two drum sets already. There you well, there go. You go. You're yeah. all set. <laughs> Noise. He's two. <laughs> one for each year that he's been alive. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> we got we got the uh, like a Melissa and Doug one <laughs> one year, and then the next one was a VTech electronic. <laughs> Perfect. But no real plans to like build up an, a whole other like audience in another brewery or anything like that. I mean, so, nothing specific in, in the works. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm actually doing is. I'm actually including a lot more original music in my sets. Excellent. So I'm, I'm actually thinking about doing more as far as like recording, getting stuff to tape so that I have something to, to give people. And then there's sure. more of an expectation that I'm not going to play Paul Simon for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I've been doing that. Call me out. I'm working on that. That was really hard by yourself. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, but I do play Kodachrome pretty much every show. There you go. But yeah, I've been thinking about just trying to see well, like where the brewery schedules are going because I know mm -hmm. this is a really tough time for the industry. So yes. you know, even even with bars and stuff, but mm -hmm. I definitely want to do something either around the same area on a different day or okay. closer to home. So, how do people find you? How do people find me? Yeah. Um, you could find me on Instagram. Okay, at uh, John Prout dot online, mm -hmm. which is you know yeah. like a late nineties handle yeah yeah <laughs> if you've ever heard of one yeah america online yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's better than <laughs> so mine. john Prout online okay um on instagram i usually i post all my gigs and i always remind people of the open mic on there excellent um, there is a facebook page for the open mic at mm -hmm. urban lodge mm -hmm. with that same exact name open mic at urban lodge brewing gotcha those are the two places you can find it okay and i'm sure that the urban lodge promotes you too Excellent. And I share it on Instagram. And that was Mr. John Prout, who could be found at Urban Lodge Brewing in Manchester, Connecticut on Wednesday nights. John, thank you so much for being on the show. And now, Bud Beer Player presents Hops 101. Bud here, and on this episode of Hops 101, we present to you... 
Featuring. I contacted Freestyle Hops located in New Zealand to inquire about this newer hop that they had developed. I was then contacted by Kathy Dunbar, Senior Vice President of Global Sales and Marketing at Freestyle Hops, and this is what she had to say. Peacherine is an advanced selection from our breeding program. In terms of flavor and aroma, Peacherine has a rich peach nectarine character with an appealing citrus backbone. In the background are hints of sweet fruit, lime zest, and indistinct floral notes. We've had amazing feedback about this hop over the last few years, so it's been an exciting success. I recently had the opportunity to try Peacherine in a beer brewed by Off Script Brewing out of Colorado, USA. The beer is called Ignorance is Bliss, and the taste was nothing short of amazing. The aroma and flavor was bold, with a strong stone fruit foundation and notes of lime zest, sweet fruit, and yeah, I even picked up on the floral in the background, just as described by Miss Dunbar. This hop has the ability to stand alone and captivate a beer, but it also plays nice with many other varieties of hops, making it a very versatile hop. The only bad part about this hop is it can be difficult to find at times, so homebrewers, if you run across it online, you better grab it while it's there. By the way, you can catch the review of Ignorance is Bliss on our social media platforms. This has been Hops 101. And here it is, folks. Thanksgiving at Tony's house. Welcome to the Russo home, where we find the Russo family gathered around the Thanksgiving table. Betsy Russo has spent the last two days in the kitchen happily preparing the festive meal for her entire family. Her husband, Tony, has been practicing his Thanksgiving tradition of watching football and drinking beer on an empty stomach, trying to save his appetite for the big meal. Let's listen in as the family prepares to eat. All right, anyone, before we dive into this wonderful meal, why don't we have Tony sing a few words? What? Yeah, Tony, like a holiday toast. A toast? Yeah. Okay. How's the toast? <laughs> to my <laughs> family. Thanksgiving is supposed to be about giving thanks for the things that we have. So, here's what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for my job that I have to go to every day and work my ass off to earn just enough money to make ends meet. But then we have to go to 12 different stores to buy all kinds of stuff to put on this table. Um, Tony, what are you doing? I'm doing what you asked, dear. Toasting our lovely family. I'm thankful for all of you that showed up to chow down on my hard-earned money. Like Cousin Davy Boy here who earns a living doing... Oh, wait. I forgot. <laughs> he hasn't worked a day in his life. <gasps> I applied for a job last Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday of 2013, maybe. You should be more like your sister over here who earns a living doing what against we her? I run a legitimate escort service. You're a hooker. <gasps> oh, and I forgot about my dear nephew, Barley. Barley goes to college. Um, well, um... Uh, don't worry, Barley. We all know that you dropped out of that prestigious school of yours. But what I don't understand is, how do you drop out of online college? Did you unplug the damn computer or something? I'm surprised you couldn't even figure out how to turn the damn thing on. <laughs> oh, okay, Tony. I, I think that's enough, dear. Oh, no. I'm just getting warmed up. And there we have my bride and joy. My own son, Kevin, who decided to drop out of school, an actual brick and mortar school, Polly, and is going to back back across Europe. Are you f***ing kidding me? It'll be a great learning experience, Dad. Oh, yeah. Well, learned experience and 10 bucks will get you a cup of coffee at that fancy, fancy coffee shop you like to go to. You know, that hippy-dippy place that you frequent every day. Oh, wait. 
you won't be able to buy anymore because you won't have a job or two shiny nickels to rub together. And if I ever catch you going in your mother's purse again, I swear, I'll- Tony! Wait, do you take money out of my purse? Only a few bucks, ma. But that's my money. Your money? Ha! I don't see you at this shipyard with me breaking your back to earn the money that comes into this house. Daddy, don't you think you've said enough? Oh, shit. Said enough? Said enough? Well, I got one more thing to say to each and every one of you. There. Now I said enough. That's right. God bless us, everyone, and to all a good night. Well, that wraps up episode 13. This coming Thursday, we hope you have a wonderful time with your family and friends at the Thanksgiving meal and that you don't have an issue like Tony did. <laughs> I'm Bud from Bud's Beer Blurb. I'll be tipping one back for you. 